Sugar Sean O'Malley. Brother. You Irish? A lot of people don't like that I'm Irish, but I'm, I'm Irish. As much as we don't want to admit it, there is one thing in life and sports that you cannot overcome. It's father time. Time is relentless and fleeting. We just have to accept that our favorite fighters are soon going to have their well-deserved ride into the sunset. Conor McGregor is a great example as he is turning 34. However, there is another Irish fighter who can at least partially give us that McGregor-esque aura. Dear friends, today's video is dedicated to five most impressive performances of Sean O'Malley. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscription to the channel so you never miss out on the videos. Here we go. David Nuzo At 15 years of age, Sean O'Malley dedicated his life to the sport of mixed martial arts. He started to train in kickboxing, and by the age of 18, he was actively performing in MMA as an amateur. Sean had five wins and just one loss. He made his professional debut in March 2015, racking up a decent streak of six wins. Most of his wins were by knockout. On May the 5th, 2017, Sean O'Malley had a fight after which he was noticed by the world's biggest league, and I am going to dissect how that happened. From the very first second of the fight, O'Malley was putting in work with his kicks. He was not letting David to pressure him by throwing good countering shots. One and a half minutes into the fight, Sean throws a combination of double jab and right overhand. A moment later, Sean drops Nuzo with a high kick. The rest of the fight was a beating. Sean knocks down Nuzo once again and a few seconds after closes the show with a magnificent spinning wheel kick. Now Nuzo's been oh. dropped three times. That is good night, Irene. That is freaking wow. brilliant. How good is this kick? What a great number of flashy kicks from Sean in this fight. Of course, UFC couldn't help noticing this spectacular kid. Alfred Kashakian After his brilliant win over David Nuzo, Sean takes part in Dana White Contender Series show. Right off the bat, he was a lot more prominent compared to other fighters due to his extraordinary appearance. A skinny dude with curly hair who can take out some university nerd at best. But as the saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover. At the very least, it was quite interesting to see what Sean is capable of. With this opportunity, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna knock this kid out. He's similar to the last three guys I fought. He's a orthodox striker, he's too slow. I'm gonna come out there, bounce in front of him, his confidence is gonna go down, I'm gonna kick him in the body, I'm gonna kick him in the head, and the fight's gonna be over in two rounds. Dan, I'm gonna knock this dude out in spectacular fashion, and you're gonna wanna sign me. I gotta go knock this kid out now, I said too much. Even though O'Malley laughed it off as he better knock this guy out, as Sean said a lot of stuff before the fight. At the actual fight day, he was more than confident. Alfred immediately starts to pressure O'Malley, hunting for his head. O'Malley did a great job at countering, throwing shots with his and proceeds to randomly press every single button on the controller. Eventually, a heavy right hand knocks Kashakian out badly. It was one of the most viral knockouts of 2017 and it was the first time we ever heard about Sugar Show from Sean. What'd you say to Dana at the end there? I said welcome to the Sugar Show. Even Dana White was very impressed with Sean as he congratulated him after the fight. But I'm looking for flashy. I'm looking for somebody who has that, uh, that thing. What is that thing? Sean O'Malley is that thing. Chris Mutino. Today's compilation is ordered in terms of win significance and its MMA community reaction. That is why we moved from 2017 to 2021, when Sean was already a popular fighter and had a potential to be a future superstar. At UFC 264, Conor McGregor's undercard, Sean was supposed to face Lewis Smoker, but Smoker pulled out of the fight and the UFC was looking for a replacement. Chris Mutino steps up and plans to make his UFC debut on short notice. It's, a lot of people think it's a lose-lose for me. Um, I make a lot of money, go out there and knock, knock this kid out. This kid's tough. This is not, you know, I, I watched one of his fights this morning for the first time, 
he, he's not he's not just a scrub he's not a nobody he's not a tr i mean he is kind of a nobody no one really knows who he is but to be fair not a lot of people know who simon is really i mean he's, he's beat a couple dudes in the ufc um i couldn't tell you how many fights he's even had in the ufc so yeah it's it's a he comes in there shocks the world it, it's a huge fight for him props for him just you know stepping up to take it it's not so much just a weakness he's very talented t very talented explosive kid um but he's i just don't think somebody's been in there to test to, to push him that way you know what i mean the only time he ever was kind of pushed was the the cheeto fight and i think i'm just gonna stay in his face man put the pressure and i think i think that's something that he's not he's not uh comfortable both fighters told the truth before the fight sean was right saying that chris is a tough guy and chris was not lying when he said he was going to put pressure on o'malley from the very first second to the end of the fight with his face Sean was lighting him up with so many strikes that it was not clear if Chris's chin is from this planet or not. But both fighters impressed a lot in this fight. Chris by walking his opponent down like a tank without any feeling out process. And Sean by pushing the pace for all three rounds and getting slightly fatigued only at the very end of the fight. Pin. O'Malley wins TKO in the third round without any exaggeration, one of the best fights of 2021. Thomas Almeida Thomas Almeida was undefeated in 2016, had a record of 21-0 and was ranked number 7 in the bantamweight division. Everyone expected him to be a future champion and that he would become the next best thing in the weight class. But Cody Garbrandt messed these plans up by knocking Almeida out in the first round. After that, Thomas was never the same and had only one win in six years. His last fight in the world's biggest league was supposed to be against Sean O'Malley. Sean lost all his fans in a matter of seconds and even posted the following tweet. I just want the fans back. Classic. Every time a fighter loses a step, he is no longer supported. Redemption fight was targeted at UFC 260 on March the 27th, 2021. Man, I, I really think he's an elite fighter, but uh, uh, yeah, he needs to show that. You know, he's a good fighter, but he needs to show him, prove it. No, I was excited about that fight. Uh, he's a good kickboxer. He, his last three fights, he's lost to good people, like really good guys. So it's, uh, you know, I think he's a legitimate opponent. I think looking at it from that perspective, saying, oh, he's coming off three losses, like, you know, he's still a dangerous opponent and he's coming off three losses, which might make him more dangerous. Um, Sean kept saying that he was still undefeated as his loss to Chito Vera was rather controversial. This statement made a lot of fans angry, but for Sean, it was part of the show, part of the sugar show. It seemed like Sean was not even trying. Countless attacks with straight punches, spinning kicks and brilliant footwork. Sean stepped back to celebrate this victory, but the referee said that the fight is still on. Ada in the third round. Great knockout and an undoubtedly spectacular performance track. Unfortunately, Thomas was released after this fight as his record was 1-5 in his last six fights. Speaking about Sean, Currently, he is on a three-fight winning streak. Eddie Wineland I believe that this fight deserves a number one spot as it's the biggest win in Sean's career at the moment. Eddie Wineland is the former bantamweight title contender. Many remember how he lost to Renan Barral by a spinning kick to the head. Wineland is also a former WEC bantamweight champion. After his loss to Barral, Eddie had ups and downs, but he was coming into the fight with Sean off his knockout win over Grigory Popov. The veteran who fought for the belt in the past was supposed to be a test for Sean to pass. Sean was coming back from his injury that put the Irishman out of the game for two years. Sean successfully returned, knocking out Jose Quinones in March 2020. And in June, he already had a fight with Eddie. Whether he whether he comes forward and pushes pushes the action, he'll get knocked out. Or or uh, if if he lets me push him backwards, he'll get knocked out. So it just it just works out perfect. You know, I I've been in there and mixed it up with with the best in the world. Uriah Faber, Benavidez, you know, Brad Pickett, Scott Jorgensen, you know, all those guys. Um, I've mixed it up with them. You know, not not that not that Sean couldn't do it. I I, I feel he could go in there and he could mix mix it up very well with those guys. 
um, but I've been there and done that, so I know how to adapt to that. Um, I think that's an advantage in my court. Wineland was supposed to be a serious test for the young and hungry Sean O'Malley. In every interview before the fight, Sean said that he wants to deliver a viral knockout and sends Eddie directly to the Morpheus Kingdom. An absolutely devastating knockout without a chance to survive. Sean earns a huge win against a well-known name in Eddie Wineland. A number 10 ranked Pedro Munoz is going to be the first serious test for Sean at UFC 276. We will see how Sean performs against such a tough opposition. I hope that Sean keeps winning. He is a very entertaining character. That's the end of our video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel and like it. See you soon.